Okay, we are now moving into session three, and we have four speakers. Um, Shilpi, Yugang, James, and Dwarika, and that's kind of the order that we'll follow. Go ahead, yeah, because we were still kind of in the law school mode before we... Now that you know how you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> Actually, okay. I, I didn't think that I would speak, but um, I'm just going to, because I haven't prepared anything, just talk about sort of very sort of free-flowing memories. Um, so just not about, not so much about work, but just sort of, yeah, the memories from maybe just the, uh, I joined in January 2010, so maybe just 2010 to 12, because those memories are still sort of the strong memories that uh, we have. So I joined back in 2016. Um, but those two years were just incredibly amazing. Uh, and I remember um, in December 2009, I came just to look at the campus with my parents and Jonathan took me around and it was so impressive. And then he took me to Sushant City and that was so scary. <laughs> and, and I think there was like a guard in front of every house, so I don't remember if that was yeah, the yeah. case. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, even with that, I'm never going to stay here. But that never happened. I didn't have to stay there. And then when the faculty housing was still coming up, and I remember being one of the first people to move. I couldn't wait. Um, and I was one of the first people to move into the first block, into the studio, definitely the first. And I think maybe Sriram had moved and pa Paddy had moved, I think. You had moved to faculty housing? No. no. It was Sriram, me, uh, Jay, uh, and uh, Paddy. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I think, the second or third to move yeah. in, and I got the best choice of housing. I was so excited about that, and no one wanted to move in. I don't know. No. Now people are clamoring for the. At that time, no one wanted to come, and they were like, "Are you crazy to be moving into this?" And um, so, and then sort of my house also became a little bit of a center point for a lot of engagement. A lot of people would just come and hang out, and. Uh, Deepika would come and stay once, one night every week, uh, and then everyone would come and be talking about Foucault and Zizek, and I really didn't know much about any of that, but it was just so exciting to be just part of, the, like, they would be discussing it, and I would just be listening and trying to learn. And really, um, apart from friendships, I really learned so much from every single person um, who I met in those two years, I mean, really everyone like contributed. I remember uh, the offices were here. The first office was Professor Murthy and, uh, and Ajay's office. And I remember whenever I would go in um, to talk to Ajay, Professor Murthy would be there and they would both be so welcoming and I would always like really have such a good time. And then starting from there, there were like everyone's offices. Oishik, I don't know who you were sharing with. Deepika and Priya were sharing. Um, and it was... Yes, James's office, yes, James's office. And it was just, you could just walk into any office at any time and have like s just wonderful conversations with people. And um, I remember uh, contracts one at that time, Priya and Nathan had made like the most incredible syllabus. I mean, it, it was just like, yeah. No. <laughs> I, both of you, and um, I mean, till now, that syllabus is just, uh, it's just amazing. And sort of learned so much from that course manual that you guys made and sort of how you got, like, the materials that you put together. Um, and uh, so, I mean, and then, of course, I had uh, Rehan as my office mate, and I've never had, like, another office mate of that caliber. We just had, we just got along really well. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, again, sort of, uh, we sort of would, me, everyone would come at lunch uh, to one of the offices and then we'd all walk down and have lunch together. Just small things that sort of just built the camaraderie and um, sort of, I never felt after college that I would have like that kind of a group of people who I could learn from and, um, and who would sort of be such close friends that whenever we meet, it's like we haven't, um, we ha like it doesn't feel like any time has passed. It just feels like you can go back to where you left off. Um, and sort of long conversations over lunch. Those are the things that we kind of 
miss now i think uh, it's just become a little bit more crowded little less space for those kind of conversations um and then we also sort of the drinks with raj sometimes raj would pop pop in for the f like we would all yeah. sort of meet in delhi and uh, everyone would whoever could come would be there and raj would also come and yeah those were those were really uh, sort of fun times raj would also come and not drink yeah yeah <laughs> 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 you would come and not drink <laughs> and um yeah so um also in terms of sort of teaching right so um when i joined i was told about like sort of this incredible faculty and students would come and talk to me about their other classes and how sort of they were having these incredible experiences in their classes and there was just so much that i learned from sort of how other people were teaching um the kind of materials they were using the kind of pedagogy they were using um it was i mean there was just there was just like a lot for me to do just to be able to sort of catch up with the people around me and i felt that really i learned a lot like i said before from from everyone so there was this incredibly sort of this atmosphere of sort of wanting to do more intellectually wanting to sort of contribute more to do the best that i think each of us could do which people have referred to before and sort of there was i think for me that was um the best part of being a jindal which was sort of uh from my from my colleagues the amount that i learned because each one of us was so deeply committed to sort of what we were doing whatever it was that we were doing i think there was a deep sense of commitment um and i mean yeah there were few of us but each of us sort of really was very very deeply committed and i think i learned a lot just from that sense of commitment that everyone sort of brought and abhay mentioned the blb coordination faculty coordination which even i was supposed to be a part of and it was such a disaster i don't think either of us <laughs> abhay would come to me and say what are you doing and i would quote him and i was like what are you doing and that was like quite <laughs> it was quite a disaster it was but, an extraordinary <laughs> yeah i i remember we would meet briefly and then they would be like yeah we should sort of do this do that and nothing we never did anything we were both we were both really bad at that um yeah so i think that's uh, pretty much what i have to say <clears throat>
I forgot. No, uh, yeah, I was asking you, you for permission to. No, speak. you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to, to Yugang. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, this is uh, such, a, such a lovely, delight, uh, delightful uh, view. And told me as well, um, how can you even drink something as hideous as this? And my response was, uh, you know, it's an acquired taste, Raj. <laughs> and similarly, earlier, uh, when I joined Jindal, so I, for most of you who don't know, I actually, um, some of you may not know, I grew up in a rather rustic slum in Agra, where being part of an academic environment itself was something which was unheard of. So it was never part of my life's plan to be an academic at all. Um, and so when I joined, my parents would ask me, well, and not just parents, everyone else, what are you doing in this private university? And I was like, it's an acquired taste, actually. You will, uh, you will not understand this. You'll have to be there to acquire it. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, I, I was doing my master's when Paddy, I mean, this is how I sort of got into it. So, unlike most of you, Raj didn't call me, Paddy called me. Uh, I was uh, staying in the student dorm in Hamburg, where Paddy was staying in another floor. So we did not know each other, except for the fact that sometimes we would run into each other on the, in the lift. And, you know, seeing a fellow Indian, we started chatting. And that's how we uh, became friends. We would just, uh, he, he used to wake up early and wake me up early, and then we would go for walks and talk about so many things. Um, and then he disappeared. Um, and I was working in a bank. I was in, in, I was in ICICI's joint venture with West Bengal Industrial Development Corporation. And I was advising them on massive industrial infrastructure projects. So I was one of the uh, people who would do the detailed project reports, some of those boring things, in the eastern part of India, mostly in rural areas. Um, and I wasn't really enjoying that as much when one day suddenly Paddy calls me after two, three years of hiatus, two years or something. And Paddy calls me and says, hey, Yvonne, you remember, I, this is uh, Paddy. Took me a few seconds to realize. Uh, I had received his marriage invitation, I remember, on email, which I couldn't attend at that time. And I quite did not, did not know what was he doing. And I asked him in that email, what are you doing, Paddy? Where are you? Congratulations, getting married. But I never heard back from him. Um, quite uh, visibly, now, uh, I realized later why. Uh, and so he says, like, you want to do this uh, you know, useless ICICI thing all your life, or you want to change higher education landscape of India? And this is how. Uh, I'm like, well, uh, this is, this is quite, a, quite an interesting, uh, uh, to be honest, I was uh, not particularly happy. I used to go to Naxal areas where government was planning largely because of, you know, pre-election pre projects, so as to, uh, and then we would come back to office and we would think about targets and stock prices. So it was really very, anyway, so I said, oh, all right, what are you doing? So he, so he told me about this Jindal University being um, set up and, uh, and he was actually uh, telling me to move everything and come back and uh, don't worry about it, just come. So it was on that call actually. And then of course, uh, a few days later, Raj and I and Paddy, three of us spoke on phone um, and I quite liked the energy. And I thought, uh, well, this could be an interesting space to be in. Um, and I came here and um, I, I came here after quitting. So I literally came on leap of faith. Uh, without even knowing what, what academia is. In fact, for most part of my life, I had despised, um, uh, you know, higher education because when I went abroad, I realized what higher education is. And in India, I was never imagining that India could have a higher education space like this. It was far out of my, my imagination of being part of one. Um, so, you know, when, so the first time I, when I came here, yeah. the flag wasn't even up. There was a, there was a you know, quota cabin. There was this cabin in which we, the people were sitting, largely LNT few from Jindal University. Two, three Jindal, you know, Raj, Neha, Amit, uh, and Paddy were there. Um, and I was reminded of you, so, so when, uh, and then of course, all of you all joined, and we were like one of the first early guinea pigs in some sense. And the reason I'm saying is guinea pigs is because I was reminded of an interesting thing at that time. So, so you know, so Vasco da Gama, when he came to India, you, know, you might laugh at it. So at back, back then, what used to happen is that whenever they would see a new land, all these explorers who were, you know, really crazy people, actually, as an entrepreneur. Um, they would, uh, so they would carry some convicts, you know, some people who were in the jails, and some slaves in, from Portugal who were first sent into the <laughs> land. <laughs> you know, these guys, <laughs> these people in Portuguese, they were called as like Degra Dadus, or there's some uh, Portuguese term for it. And there was a standard, every ship had a few of them. Whenever they would see land, they would first send them off, and they would disappear, and once they returned, then, they, then everyone else would. <laughs> 
and I hey, come to this uh, place and the uh, thought is, well, you know <laughs> what the thought was. All right? but, uh, but the good deal is that if you get rich in that land, these uh, the, the ship sailors, then the Degrad Adus would also be freed. And they would then you know, end up being in that place, uh, probably have mansions and uh, do all kinds of things. Um, turned out pretty similar so far, at least, in, in case of Jindra. Yeah, but the, but the thing is, yeah, but so the thing is, at the, in the beginning, yeah, but we were Portuguese, not British, so, you know, kind of. The others uh, could be. So, um, so it, it was fascinating. But, but I'm drawing these analogies because I think, um, you know, this morning when I was reflecting on, and life doesn't let you reflect this very often, it was an emotional moment. I was thinking about some particular concept that could tie in all these experiences together for me, and I have a list of those experiences I remember. I went to pick up Vic. Um, I had taken a mini van for his suitcases. And I'm not joking. So he came with his wife and kids in a car. So the car was separate. And then there was a van because he had like 20 suitcases. 20 suitcases. These people are loading up. And I am thinking to myself, you know, we must be doing something. This guy is coming with all his hopes, aspirations loaded onto these. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, like, I, um, I really never had any uh, experience of being in a good law school, for, so to speak, because law school was the first one. And I'm seeing these uh, rock star, uh, you know, um, uh, ac you know would-be academics who are coming from all kinds of amazing universities. Um, there must be something going on here. Anyway, so, but the, but the interesting thing is that these things, um, this reminds me of this uh, term called analogies. Analogy is an interesting idea. And the reason why it is important in this context uh, I mean, analogy is actually, we all do analogies all the time. Whenever we think about doing something, and this is, off late I have gone really deep into complexity and logic, and this is an interesting takeaway. In fact, Henry, Henry Th David Tharu, who was, who, by the way, was also influenced, I think he influenced Gandhi in his civil disobedience, and we are just going to celebrate 150th anniversary. He also used to say that uh, every perception of truth is essentially a, a detection of an analogy. So do an exercise with me, for instance. So let's say if ABC becomes ABD, then what will PQR become? It's a simple analogy. Hmm? ABC becomes ABD. PQR must become what? PQS. PQS, that's what comes to your mind. Hmm? Uh, I think almost all of us would believe that PQS is the answer. The interesting thing is none of us can persuade me why, uh, for instance, PQ, uh, PQC is, PQD is the answer because maybe the third alphabet is removed and all, you always put D. Maybe ABC becomes ABD, PQR becomes PQD, uh, XYZ becomes XYD. That's also equally correct, right? Um, or for that matter, uh, you can't, uh, maybe ABC becomes ABD, so PQR also becomes ABD. How, what makes us think that it will not become uh, ABD? Uh, or for that matter, um, I mean, I've written a number, there are, there are you know, un, un, innumerable uh, some of these. Uh, 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 in fact, P if ABC becomes ABD, uh, maybe PQR becomes uh, XYZ or A and, A and G. I mean, there is no reason to believe that if ABC becomes, unless you, I give you two such conditions through which you can make this pattern. But the interesting thing is, our minds make patterns with just one condition, so we extrapolate without good data, right? That's what we often do. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is pretty much, so I was looking at all kinds of instances that have happened in Jindal in which I was part of. Most of these incident, instances or decisions that we had to take, and particularly in the early days, um, most of our decisions were not taken on, were basically, we, we were not able to draw analogies because of lack of data. There is nothing that exists which shows us, oh, if we do it like this, something like this will happen. Uh, if we get good faculty, maybe it will run. In fact, on the contrary, everybody around us told us PQR will not become PQS. It will actually become everything else because, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, pessimism. But the reason why, um, why this is also important is that once we realize that we are, and by the way, uh, I, sh I should also, uh, you know, computers really can't do analogies. Making analogies, making a, making a program that interprets analogies is still uh, really in its infancy. Um, if I show a computer a dog, and then I show another dog swimming in the pool, the computer can't recognize it. Uh, very, very difficult programs. But human beings can. So there's something about us that we do analogies all the time. Um, and uh, 
in Jindal's case, we were not even able to do that particularly, specifically. So when we go to, uh, you know, I remember with Sandeep Kindo, Raj, and we were in Ranchi, and uh, I mean, not just Ranchi, Mumbai, all kinds of places that we've been to. Students are asking all kinds of questions why I could. So yeah, so we're telling them, you know, you should join this law school. This is going to be great. Uh, we don't have a building, but we will have it yet. Uh, we are a private law school, but we are not like amities. Uh, we have good faculty who are not old and who don't have gray hair. Uh, and you have to pay six lakhs a year actually to do this. Um, it's quite a, uh, quite a r you know, remarkably impossible analogy to draw for anybody at that age who's thinking, oh, because something like this has happened, that is why probably this will also be good. And the funny thing is, in pretty much every little detailed aspect of various types of operations within the university, there were no analogies. And so we had to believe. So the only way, so by the way, the only way you can prove me that PQR becomes PQS is if you believe in it. There is no other logical way that you can show it to me. Because the others are equally correct probabilities. So the idea of looking at the world without analogies is something that I learned here. And I think all of us did, with, without knowing probably, actually. And so we make all kinds of decisions on a daily basis without analogy because we did a number of them here. And these, these had high stakes. Um, and I can go on and on. I mean, I, I taught and learned it was through my students. And in fact, each one of you, I have learned, you may not know this, but I have learned enormously from you all. In fact, uh, Sriram, the book that you prescribed, uh, history book, in the first semester you were teaching history, I remember. I, uh, in, in, um, in the Bikaji office, which was so tiny that I could not escape Raj or Paddy's eyes, I actually took that to the toilet and read two, three chapters <laughs> straight down. And then I spoke to you about it, and you may not remember, but we had a very, very long chat, like of several hours about so many things that, <laughs> you know, Shilpi has been one of my... We didn't know it. No, yeah, in fact, uh, I've learned, uh, Jay is here, and Steve, you've been like some of the most amazing and most inspiring mentors I've had. Michael Davis, who's not here, Peter Shug as well. Shilpi was my great support in the, during my doctorate days. And we used to, uh, I, she was also the gossip queen even there about Jindal when I was in Europe. So she knew everything. Uh, Rehan was the one. <laughs> Rehan, with Rehan, we had such amazing, amazing time with Rehan, in Bhutan in particular. And uh, we spoke about uh, so many ideas. And, uh, and Rehan also talks fast, so you have to keep thinking fast with him, <laughs> which is which was oh, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oishik, uh, Deepika, your work particularly. I mean, I was literally, and Amit Bindal's, you guys initiated me into thinking about uh, what critical, how do you think critically in law, critical legal. You know, you, you might scorn of, ah, okay, isko kya pata hoga, hame kya pata. Yeah, but it was great. It was like, uh, things that you mentioned, I would go back and read. And it is only through this that I've learned, actually. Because I, all of you know, I'm an engineer by training, like most Indians. And like most Indians, I hated it. But unlike most Indians, I, I, came, I joined academia in a very, very different, uh, different sphere. Um, uh, with, with Priya as well, we've had so many conversations in, in the IGLP in particular and you know, on informality. In fact, the course that you did on law and development, something like that, was actually the, the trigger for me to start thinking about law and development. And institutional economics is what I was doing uh, you know, earlier, which later on I offered as an elective, which became, and you know, because I used to get stuck in many different uh, possibilities of thought, one of them actually became my thesis, uh, thesis ideas. Uh, and, and so um, I would remember our, uh, Shimla, Indian Institute of Advanced Studies days, thinking about Gandhi and learning about Gandhi together. It's nice we're meeting just on his 150th anniversary about. No, this, is, uh, this has been a great, I can go on and on. In fact, uh, I remember so many things that we, that we have kind of left behind us. But the interesting thing is that whenever I run into people, those who are with us or who are however much there were all kinds of drinking, gossipy sessions at that time about something which is nice, which is not nice. It somehow filters into something very fond with whoever I meet. And, and there's hardly been any, uh, any exception. It's just, it's just incredible. And I think I've been extremely fortunate, particularly me, because I really do not come from a tradition uh, where academia, teaching, anything of that sort was even remotely considered to be a career profession. Uh, and this type of... Uh, uh, I have often told to some of my uncles and aunts, yeah, wo bank mein nikse nikal gaya tha, isliye aa gaya, because I have stopped explaining my, 
my presence in in academia but this has been an absolutely it has to, it has been a roller coaster uh, roller coaster ride i have to say and uh, um, in fact uh, dk sir reminded me of uh, the ac league of uh, you know uh, sandhu brothers and i so, i mean the first two three years were literally going in crazy learning while well, and uh, you know the, you mentioned laundry the banker the banker later on helped me get my car loan as well <laughs> <laughs> who who then who i was helping in setting up an atm here <laughs> and um, you know the lnt uh, uh, the lnt guy uh, the lnt guys i mean the list of them their faces are flashing in front of my eyes who would tell us you know kaam ho raha tha raat bhar and what was the kaam ho raha tha wo raat bhar sukh raha tha cement so this was the work which was going on the day before students were supposed to arrive and i don't know probably raj may not have explained you know mentioned or illustrated the story the day you were in the first batch ajita so the day before you were to arrive here um paddy i raj and neha we were going for lunch and we were just sat in a car when somebody stopped our car who is was supposed to be a parent like you know his, his daughter was joining and he is i think he was fairly Banu, like mg ke banu so this is very and uh, murthy sir you were also there yeah, yeah, yeah. very senior bureaucrat yeah, and he, you you were there he was not in the car we just, as 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 we sat in the car he kind of waved and we stopped and we pulled the windows down and uh, these were his words um, that uh, you know tomorrow your students are coming my daughter will be coming but many other and big people have their kids joining the school yeah yeah exactly great you know thanks for coming but you know the situation i think you should bring some security because there could be riots here you look at the campus what's going on here what are you trying to do and so and these hmm? there's no boundary wall The, and so basically every uh, possible uh, worker or laborer that you could imagine was working everywhere so it looked like there's at least 6 months ahead that you're going to plan anything in this space and the next the students were supposed to come uh, this is quite a quite a moment at least for me you know uh, one of my early I was very young then and and then we went and had lunch and then of course we did so at at this stage it becomes very difficult for us to realize how did it happen and is there is there may not necessarily be a formula for it it's like one of those complex adaptive systems see the you know the inputs will change because the because the object will adapt itself based on the input but things happened he came he was actually very happy the next day i remember meeting him and others um, you know with all uh, with all sympathies with the first batch who definitely was also one of the degra dadus joining and then the others joining ha ye log nikal gaye acche se to iska matlab baki log bhi theek honge it was uh, and many of the projects that i've done gazetteer in particular and i have to thank uh, each one of you Uh, raj in particular who i have worked the most you know most closely and dwari of course uh, who inspired me so much part of the reason why i could do my doctorate and my own anxieties was because of dwari's paddy's uh, constant support and raj's it's uh, i would probably be somewhere in a bank if at all or maybe i don't even know what could i i would be i mean th- it, it it's impossible if i had not stayed in that probably in that uh, dorm in hamburg that i would be here right now um and you can't really make this is like path dependent life the more i move on it the more the higher the switching cost is to move to the other to the other thing but the but the zeal to pick up something new and which is what i'm doing often many of my many people look at my cv and say that maybe you want to focus on one thing and so now that there's some focus is now appearing but my my excitement to navigate across these disciplines is largely because of uh, my experience you know personally speaking and i think it has been uh, it has been a roller coaster right that i i enjoyed thoroughly i was out for 2 3 years during my doctor but back after coming back it was it's just growing uh, enormously it's like um, you know um, abhay and i so i recently got married and uh, abhay got married couple two years ago i think three getting close to four during close to four and so we were both discussing our so you know um, like so again analogies abhay is trying to create analogies for me to think about what was going to come in future and so you know the idea is that first year is nice first two years nice then the problems happen and then after that probably things are smoother um and so i think in my sense in some sense my journey has also been in uh, you know from 9 to 12 i'm going to be this this will not stop otherwise good that you did it <laughs> uh, 9 to 12 were great was a great time and then <coughs> so i think we now in a some, some sort of an auto mode uh, space where i can do things think about things uh, and i have to um, i have to uh, you know james has been a great support as well who i don't see very often these days 
but uh, so good to so good to have you around. I'm, I'm going to stop here. I want to so quickly much. say that um, Yugank was very special because of the fact that he was one of those individuals who never hesitated to do anything at any point of time in the best interest of the institution. He was completely uh, self-effacing and pretty much he, there are very few people who could combine that degree of, you know, uh, personal humility when it comes to doing things that may not necessarily be, uh, you know, consequential for their own personal growth, but then they are doing it for the immediate interest of the institution. And I think uh, as an institution builder, uh, he brought to bear that degree of commitment and dedication uh, that I, you know, I, I, I've told him also that uh, I have always, since he left uh, after his first stint uh, abroad, I've always missed having him around because, you know, the kind of work that uh, me, Muthi, and some of us are doing, forget the thanklessness of it. Um, it needs people who not only tell us what to do in the faculty board meetings, but who actually will do it. And these are two different things. Uh, even today I noticed that, that there are lots of people who give faculty board meeting advice, but there are so few people who will actually be with you, walk with you, sit with you, think with you, and actually do with you. And that's what Yugank always stood for. So thank Thanks. you, Yugank. So I think, uh, thanks, Raj, Yugang, DBG, everyone for organizing it. You know, when I, I mean, I couldn't uh, really, when we really think about this institution, 10 years is a very short period. And I can, you know, remember every word, every day that I spent here. Uh, I got the letter of appointment on 28th of April. I joined on 31st of August. The classes started on the 5th of October. But beyond that, I think, when we really look at, you know, the, the kind of feelings people expressed in the, on the first day, Abhir spoke about the serendipity. Uh, Raj said that I am not the vice chancellor's son, I am the vice chancellor. <laughs> right? Or, or, Yugang, or Yugang saying that, uh, you know, joining Jinder Law School is a no-brainer. So all these things are actually repeated. And, and let me tell you, I got even an opportunity to work with Jane and other people for the Jinder Law Review. And I was looking at the, the kind of endorsement people have made. You know, Krishna here men, mentioned in that uh, gender law review that it, is, it doesn't uh, belong to this world, it actually belongs to the cosmos. So the kind, of, uh, the, the kind of hype, I mean, I don't know, hyperbole or whatever, that we created in the beginning was good enough to attract people. And uh, speaking from my own experience, you know, I joined, I think I sent me acceptance in April, but, you know, in, in the month of, uh, I think, October or July, not October, actually, I think August, uh, Jindal came up with uh, one advertisement saying that students who applied for CLAT can also apply here. Then I thought, my God, I'm, am I going for a mid-career crisis? Are students not joining here in this institution? But I think it is, it is a tremendous hard work, vision of Raj and many other people who really made this happen. So let me also talk a, a, about a few things. You know, when I joined here, I think about the first experience, the classes started on the 5th of October. And I remember that. Yeah, the schedule, I think. So we were 10 minutes late, in fact, because the vehicle came much later to Sushan City. And Raj was waiting here on this corridor. And my class was this one. So I was uh, teaching section five. He didn't say anything, but he had a stare, a hard stare. And I can't even forget, I, ca I can't even forget that hard stare he made on the day. And let me tell you, it was even more interesting because it, you know, the period, it was actually a full day. So I was teaching legal method, which we prepared after nearly one month of preparation with the DBG and Abhay. And we started teaching. We got pretty exhausted by 9.30. It started at 8.30 at that time. Went up to 10.30, 11.30, it's not ending. Then at 12.30, we had a break. And then we had two more sessions in the afternoon. My God, I thought that <laughs> we had exhausted everything that we had actually accumulated over a course of time. So it was tough in the beginning, but I also feel that um, you know, Raj gave us a space in the beginning to work. Uh, I remember we didn't have to come to the campus every day. So speaking from my own experience, I, I really feel that the kind of independence and freedom given to all of us 
And especially in my case, I was living in Dede, came to the campus. So I was doing my work, you know, my center's work, but he never second guessed what I'm doing all the time. And giving that kind of faith, you know, having that faith in the faculty, allowing them to do what they really want to do is actually a, a great sign of leadership. And that way, I think most of the founding faculty members here, um, they, they went through a struggle. I, I remember, because I got into legal history, a subject which I didn't know at all. Then I got legal method, which is fairly, you know, a, a fairly good subject. So I had to start reading everything. I started wake up, waking up at 4 in the morning and starting things. And Professor Muthi sometimes came from Delhi and stayed with me. And I saw him correcting answer sheets at 6.30 in the morning and giving exhaustive comments. So I said, don't you have any other work? <laughs> <laughs> so all these things actually, that showed our commitment at that time. Because um, sometimes I also felt that we were only a day ahead of the students. Because we were teaching a new subject. And especially in my case, I think I was, uh, especially in my case, I actually took up a lot of subjects, not because I really liked it, but Paddy told me, James, you know, we don't have a teacher this semester for this subject. Would you like to teach? So I ended up teaching contracts, specific performance. I don't know the names of subjects I taught. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, you know, by 2013, I had taught around 15, 20 subjects. Maybe do you regret? I don't. Maybe my, my academic, my publication work might have been affected a little bit. But if you really look at the kind of, you know, expanse, the breadth of knowledge you got, I don't think it is actually a mistake. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. Uh, Raj got all the training in Hong Kong. I don't take any credit for it, but he got the training in Hong Kong. Right. So, in, um, in a way, I think I also would like to say a few things about uh, you know, the kind of rigor and the commitment we have. So at that time, I mean, I correct my answer sheet now in 2018 or 19, but I don't take more than a day. At that time, we devoted three, four good days. And I remember spending huge amount of time with the DK on course manuals. And still I haven't figured out what is actually learning outcome and. <laughs> 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 OBT. I haven't really figured it out. <laughs> but I think uh, it was a reflection of the kind, the kind of passion we had for the institution. And we only flourished because of the freedom that I think we got here. The academic freedom, that was, that was significant. And there was never a fighting with the faculty and students. We fought, you know, I did not even fight in the academic board meeting. Uh, but a lot of people had their own strong views. But I think at the end of the day, people were civilized, they were dignified. And that actually contributed to having a great atmosphere here. So even now, I'm on a short sabbatical from here. I would like to come back and be part of the academic community. James, James has been an amazing faculty member. He's actually he's not on any sabbatical. He's on complete leave of absence in the sense that we don't pay him anything and still he teaches. So he's working for the government of India, holding a very senior position, appears for the government of India and in the WTO. But his passion and his commitment and his dedication brings him every week you know, to, I mean, people must be wondering that why he's doing that, but that's exactly what it is. I want to read that quote which he talked about. In 2008, Krishnaya writes, <clears throat> the OP Jindal Global University and the Jindal Global Law School are an <laughs> and wisdom in every dimension and an, ex and an expanding universe of erudition, embracing its rich plurality, the art of living and science of being. Entire humanity is its comprehensive constituency. Search for truth in its limitless infinity and exalted excellence are of supreme ambition. May this tryst with divine noises be fulfilled in the sublime century of ever escalating achievements. Law and life will reach their finest hour when this great goal gains profound locomotion through this unique university. I'm good. 2008. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wanted to be last because uh, this whole journey of JGU and JGLS is intertwined with each other. They're kind of the twins, and that's the old starting point. It's interesting to be the second born. 
right? Uh, because of the fact that if there is an uh, age difference between first and the second, you know, the, at least some level of understanding, some level of how to bring up a child, all that happens. But, but the second born is, is also trying to come out of the womb too early, right? The mother doesn't know what to do to do that because you have to manage one infant and then the other one is trying to kick out and <laughs> come out. Uh, in that sense, uh, I guess uh, it was interesting because I've been as part of business schools for quite some time before I came here. So I was part of two very interesting uh, top-notch uh, uh, institutions called MICA and SPGEN. And in a sense, before I came here, I had done this twice. So I'd set up the SPGEN Global in Dubai, which was as startup as this was. And I did a one year consulting to uh, set up a small school in, in a very similar remote areas in Himachal. So that was the time when Raj was got introduced, and I got introduced to Raj through our common friend called Sumit Chandana. Sumit and Pratibha, I think, were friends in. in classmates in Delhi University and friends. This is how you know, things work out. So uh, when, when Deepika said um, uh, research, teaching, and friendship, I guess I will start with friendship because this is how most of us are here and most of the reason why we ended up being part of a larger family called GAGU was because of this. And, and, and Sumit then introduced me to Raj. We interacted. I was still with Micah. And we engaged with each other. And the day Raj called up saying that we are looking now to build the team, would you like to come and join? I said, Raj, a week ago, I said yes to a consulting assignment in Himachal. And he said, can we talk about it? I said, look, I've already committed. And uh, you know how uh, it's not like commitment kardi to kardi, but I think it's, it's always professional. But the day I finished my commitment, the, you were the first one to hear from me. And this happened in some time in May of 2009 when I called Raj saying that uh, the project is coming to an end. Do you think there is something for me there at uh, JGU? He said, why not? Yes, please. And I think the very uh, next week I came and met. He said, come to Jindal Center. So here I was, I said, like, wow, Jindal Center, Bhika Ji Kama, looking very nice. And I said, where is uh, JGU office? And he said, no, 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 not at the Jindal Center. It's opposite that. You have to come. And I said, OK. So suddenly, from a Jindal Center expectation sets, I had to come to that dingy, small, with one toilet office where he would disappear, and we have to wait outside. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I said, OK. And uh, Raj had gone to Sonipat. So I met Ranga. So in a sense, Ranga is the first person for uh, JGBS. And we remember him and his contribution today. And then I met Raj. And I was a little startled, because I've always felt that I'm one of those younger guys uh, who have done quite a lot as a startup. And then is a guy even younger looking, right? and who is now the vice chancellor of a university, right? And uh, it was a good conversation. And then we engaged with each other. The real uh, thing started only when uh, I met uh, DK and Amanji. And uh, because Raj was so busy with first batch of law school, it was only with DK and Aman that I started conceptualizing how to create a business school and larger multi-faculty university, which is predominantly initially would be a law-centric university. So those were initial days, and those were initial um, challenges. Uh, and we were able to hire some good faculty members. The challenges we faced at business school were twofold. Uh, there were too many, first, in the country. So how do you create a new out of that? And that too part of the larger multi-faculty university, because India has always been a standalone business school-centric place. You had islands of excellences like SPGN or XLRI or IAMs. That's one. Second challenge was that we needed PhD faculty. So unlike law school, where we could hire younger uh, LLMs, uh, DK and I struggled to sift through a lot of PhD applications. And our first breakthrough came uh, when we were able to crack I am the bug. So uh, I was able to reach out to their PhD coordinator, who happened to be one student. And you know how 
Raj works and how he made us work. So those guys couldn't imagine that uh, they sent an email because they are, uh, they are students, they sent an email to me at 12.10 that, uh, yeah, we heard about it, and as FPM students from IIM Ahmedabad, we would be keen to uh, explore. 12.13, they received a BlackBerry message back uh, from me, saying that, yes, we, are, we would be very keen, and next week we are going to come. So DK and I, they couldn't believe that, because they've been sending applications to many places. They didn't know how we work, right? So at that time, you know, I used to teach marketing, and we have four Ps in marketing, right? But my life was four Bs. Blackberry, <laughs> boss, Blackberry, Bacha, and BV, right? In that, in that order. So uh, those were hectic times, and those were, were really tough times for us. And I think I worked a lot with DK during the business school phase, and of, of course, Dr. Sani as well, because Raj was really, really busy setting up the law school, and uh, not without the reason. So to, to start the business school, which had to come in 2010, I owe a lot to, to DK and his perseverance with me. And he often find my sense of dressing extremely outrageous. <laughs> you know, I. I, I you know, I, I, you know I, I've never dealt with lawyers in my life. I've never dealt with Ivy League guys. I've never dealt with people uh, so formal. And first meeting, what is an agenda? I said, like, what, do you have an agenda, right? Yeah, so agenda has to come. Leave of absence need to be given to a certain set of people. So he will conduct those meetings extremely in a delicate, uh, uh, precision manner. And it's like half an hour gone. <laughs> guys, we haven't yet started, right? And then I used to have um, uh, pink sandals, and DK used to hate them. And I said, where do you get these sandals from? <laughs> and why, why are you not wearing a jacket? And I would wear, as usual, DK, just to rile you again. I was very formally dressed yesterday, but today I wanted to rile you. And he said, you know, you're setting a business school. Business schools, so guys are always formal. I said, come to my car. You know, I used to go and torn jeans. Uh, to my classes, but those were days and, and very interesting. And I want to remember a very interesting freaky guy called Raman Kannan, yeah. uh, who is a PhD physics, worked in Wall Street. One fine day, sends me an email saying that there's a calling for me coming in life, and I want to come to the land of the Kauravas and the Panduvas. And <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. The guy had all kinds of reasons to come back, and 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 I was shit scared because he's never come to India after many years. He wanted to come back. And um, I went all the way to the airport to pick him up so that he doesn't get lost. OK, at 5.30 in the morning, which means 3.30 I left here. And I kept him in my house. I couldn't you know, trust any other place at that point of time. So kept in my house for almost a week. So uh, uh, three years ago, I went to US. And I met Kanan again and his wife. And, uh, Prafulla, his wife, was extremely gracious and kind. And she said, Dwari, we owe you a lot. And I said, what? I didn't do anything. He said, no. At the time when Raman was really existential crisis in his life, he wanted to explore what he can do with his new things, new calling in life. And he was in a country and a place where Sonipat again, where everybody said no. After He was coming after 30 years. And, his, his, and, and he had a Mercedes back home in US. He was a city banker. And he wanted to drive my car once. I said, no, you're going to kill everybody, right? <laughs> no, I never let him drive, right? But the, Raman was there. Then I, then I, I got uh, the gem of a, of a guy who really helped me build my first guy to business school, who is now back with you. And I'm very proud of him, called Anand Mishra. Uh, Anand, uh, uh, not many people know, happened to be my student at my car. So Samina met us yesterday. He said, how could Anand be your student, right? <laughs> I said, yeah, Anand. Uh, was my student, and Anand really then helped us because other other three guys joined later, but Anand was really the pioneer with us. Then Shona. The the yeah, yeah, law school, business school, and now uh, the uh, banking now. Then we had Shanak and Prageet, and Prajesh continues to work and, and be the vice dean now, and very, very proud, found, uh, proud of him and, and many others. And we had an interesting guy called Michael Barnes. So I'm one of the only guys who hires his own boss. <laughs> OK, so I hired him. And the only thing I picked up from him was his love for shoes. Uh, but I couldn't match him. Uh, and his another love is like marrying six times that I can't do. <laughs> 
But Michael, interesting character, he keeps in touch, uh, keeps bugging me. But he had 75 shoes. <laughs> 75 shoes, and he picked up a sport called archery. I was like, wow. And he would creep that why Indian women are not interested in him. <laughs> right? I said, look, they have better tastes. Yeah? So anyway, but Michael, again, was a very, very dear and lovely character. I, I loved it. And Yugang talked about JLR, and, and this is interesting because this is uh, where you're telling people that we exist even before we existed. So Raj, I think the, 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 the credit goes a lot to you, wherein the intellectual output started coming in a lot more. This is a great template to have. You don't, institutions are not made by buildings. Institutions are made by people and their intellectual output. And this is extremely critical. You know, I've traveled so much and shifted so many places. I'm a traveling professor in that sense. The first law review is still with me. I've not thrown it back. My wife said, I said, no, this is an institutional memory. It should stay. Because was, even before we existed, even before this place existed, even before everything existed, the law review existed. I think Yugang can, and, and, and Jay, and you, brilliant. I think, I think. On, uh, exactly on 8th August. Yes, yes, at, at our India. At Habitat Center. And at Habitat Center, because we used to organize so many play, uh, uh, things, there are a lot of people who could keep on roaming around Habitat saying that, Aaj lunch kaha milega? <laughs> so I was standing out, because we were waiting for Naveen ji to come, and this guy was like waiting for a bag and a pen and a diary and a lunch. And I figured out this guy never belongs to the fraternity outside, but I said, let him be. Yeah, because I think what, what uh, Jay is talking about, who, the, the book which reached the brochures and others reached, Masi and those young boys, probably those people were picking it up from, from that side. I guess, I guess that's, that's where uh, it was interesting. Uh, I had great memories of this place building up uh, twice because I also had to mentor my young faculty. Uh, they didn't know how to teach. Uh, they didn't know how to make course curriculum. They didn't know how to go about. Uh, so I think the freedom Raj gave to law faculty, uh, they inspired by that also. Uh, I also gave a lot, of a lot of freedom to my faculty at that point of time because I was running the school. And, and today, I guess, when Brajesh calls me up saying that I, I, I owe my academic career to you, Dwari, sir, I think that's a, that's a big, big um, thing to me uh, to do that. And of course, I was the bridge between the law school and the business school because they're the first two set of faculty members. And that's why I have uh, great memories with and friendship with all of you guys. Um, I, 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 start, I had my own uh, life journey. I'm doing interesting things. Um, as Sriram was asking, you never wrote poetry when you were here. Uh, so I wrote some in a contrarian way. And I never liked the steel structures. I never liked these uh, glass panels because I'm more of a brick. Uh, and a nature guy. Uh, so I wrote three lines. I was inspired by Gulzar that time. And, and, and Steve, I will translate it for you because it's in Hindi. And I said, Lohe ki salakho pe kaanch ki diwaare khadi kar di. Lohe ki salakho pe kaanch ki diwaare khadi kar di hain, wo paradarshi hain. Ek umar guzar gai khid ki talash te. Because we never had those windows which we could open up, right? And there was, in a sense, was also a, a thought process that uh, we had to create an environment is much more open and limiting. So though physicality was an interesting dimension, but I guess it's part of culture, it was extremely open. Uh, so I'll stop here. Uh, and uh, as uh, I was telling Shiram that I'm doing interesting things, so I've just written a song for a Bollywood film. Uh, which might not see the light of the day, but uh, uh, I wrote the song, uh, but uh, it's still in the process. But I thought it would be very fitting to end my talk with a tribute to mothers. So this song is a tribute to all our mothers, right? So here it goes. I hope it works. Sorry.
आंखों में छुपा के पानी के छपा के देखा है रथ जगा तेरा ओ आंखों में छुपा के पानी के छपा के देखा है रथ जगा तेरा तेरे चूल्हे की वो आग गरम है लिपटी उम्मीदों की वो भाप नरम है तेरे बिन मेरा ना निशान तू ही धूप तू ही छा तेरे बिन मेरा ना निशान Thank you. I want to say that uh, what Dwari didn't say also is that um, he was uh, working under in a very difficult circumstances because of the fact that uh, the law school had started off in that in a in a particular way, and business school's idea was to do a lot of catching up, but then the foundations that he had put there. Uh, created opportunities for people who came after him and uh, you know uh, dwari uh, i mean if you look at the business school it has over the years you know you know flourished and i the, and there was a phase when